All right, we're recording here. As I'm, uh, I'm in Magog. I'm with, uh, I'm with my friend here, Johnny. Johnny, you're in San Diego, Escondido, right now. Where are you? Uh, that's correct, Escondido, California. Escondido, California. Now, I wanted to introduce you to all my friends here in Canada. I mean, we've been friends for almost 12 years. Uh, we were saying a little earlier before. And uh, I guess, you, you know, you, you've gone through a lot, and I've gone through a lot, and we've become some, you know, good friends. And, uh, well, tell me a little bit about you. I want, I want you to introduce yourself to my friends here. Okay. Hey, everybody in Canada. How you guys doing? Um, I just want to introduce myself a little bit. My name is John Riccio. Been a friend of Mark's for 12 years now. Uh, uh, we both share a passion for bodybuilding. And uh, for me, I, I was born with uh, cerebral palsy. Uh, we're about the same age, actually, me and Mark. And uh, so life was always full of challenges. Uh, you know, just balance itself was a challenge. Couldn't even sit up when I was little. Would fall over all the time. Had to had to be have a bunch of pillows around me, <laughs> otherwise I'd have a bunch of bruises. And uh, you know, uh, had braces and crutches. Spent a lot of time in the wheelchair. And uh, you know, uh, you know, people are kids or kids can be brutal at that age. And uh, but I always loved Jack Lane and. Uh, that's how it started, eh? Uh, the, your passion for bodybuilding was, uh, you know, you uh, you watching and then uh, you lo looking at Jack Lane's bodybuilding magazines, right? Oh, oh yeah, he had a television show, and and I I was he was my hero because here was a guy who who looked so much better than everybody else, and he was so fit, and and to a, a little guy with CP who's all twisted up and can't even sit up, that's your hero. Wow! Because you know, he could get, he could do things like I only dreamed about. Because at that age, at an early age, John, I mean, like you were telling me before, I mean, it was hard for you just to to to, to, to open up your hands and 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 to hold on, right? My hands were like like this, you know, and that that's really tough. I remember I used hey, I had to they had to take a play doh and put it around the pencil so I could open my hand up. But uh, right, over continuous effort and perseverance, you were able to open up your hands and actually start picking up some weights and 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 and, and bodybuilding, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it took a it was a long progression, but uh, I think I picked up maybe my first weight around 15, 16, just a little bit, and then and then grew to I got bit by the bug and grew to love it. Cause uh, and uh, ma even though you I mean you were walking on crutches, you were you were managing to move around, but you were on crutches most of the time, right? Oh, that's correct. Yeah. And that took a beating on your shoulders, cause you know, you, I mean, it's just you were jamming, bamming, banging these shoulders for years. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, and forty years of just pound, pound, pound on the ground all the time, and uh, you know. I, I thank the good Lord that I, I was able to put on some mass. I think that saved the shoulders, the musculature around the shoulder and deltoid area, uh, saved them from going even quicker. So when you when you actually started training around 15, 16, you went to gyms and you hung around the gyms for quite some time, did you? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Once I, once I graduated high school and was going to work, I uh, graduated from the plastic, uh, you know, the plastic 110 pound set that we all had with the three, three adjustable uh, bench. I graduated from that and went to the YMCA and had to be carried down the stairs because the stairs keep for me. Yeah. That didn't keep you from uh, that didn't keep you from kept going and you went out every day and busted your ass for years, eh? Right, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it, it was. It took seven years of hard training and studying and nutrition. And, and then you finally made it on stage. You said, man, I'm, I'm going to go out there and see what my crutch is. And see, I'm going to go do a bodybuilding show. Yeah, yeah. I, um, and uh, I'll never forget, I got interviewed by Lonnie Keeper for Iron Man Magazine. Yeah. But that's cool. That was a good experience. And you look good. I mean, we'll come up with that video again pretty soon. There, We should... Go back in our archives every bit, pick up the time when you were on stage. That was that was fantastic. And now you're in San Diego and things are going better for you. I mean, obviously after spending what over five years in there in those facilities after operations and operations, well and, and still when we met each other twelve years ago, I mean you still had your legs. Yeah, yeah, when we met each other I still had my legs and, and you were you were getting me in shape for a surgery. 
Yeah, I mean, that's what you do because uh, how many surgeries have you gotten so far? 125. No, I mean, you know, that's what you do. I mean, you, you, you get yeah. in shape, you go, well, I'm preparing for my next surgery. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Most people go on vacation. You know, or do a bodybuilding show. You know, you know, I, I just yeah. get ready for my next, uh, next surgery. No one can say I'm not a real cut-up. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the legs. What happened to the legs? Nine, I got a hundred percent blockage in both femoral arteries, and we ended up having to uh, uh, amputate from above the knee both uh, both legs. And but prior to that, you know, when I met you at one point, I mean, you had some surgeries in the legs where you had pins coming out of your toes. I mean, what was that all about? <laughs> the the swelling <laughs> it was amazing. The swelling was actually breaking the bones. Yeah and causing them to malform it, so they had to put steel inside of it to realign the bones in the feet and, and in the shin area. And then uh, when once we got the blockage, there was no blood flow and so no nutrients, and then they were, it's kind of like a dead stick, it wasn't responding. And so they, in order for it to stop moving up, we, we had to amputate. And then you you had to get uh, you I mean you got at the amputation more than once. They amputated more than once. Yeah, I I went back into the hospital. I had been training and I was actually in really good shape. And uh, I just went in for uh, bilateral shoulder surgery to remove some bolt chips in each shoulder and repair the rotator cuff. And I thought, gee, I'm going to be out in six weeks. And so while I while I was just recuperating from the the. Uh, rotator cuff repairs and the bone chip removal, the clots came back with a vengeance and they ended up having to disarticulate both legs in 2015. Wow, wow, wow. And then after that, it was, we would keep on working on them shoulders, right? Yeah, yeah, because, because of the clotting issue, the blood flow, of course, wasn't getting to the ligaments, tendons, and bones, so everything was snapping and breaking because the blood supplies the nutrients nutrients weren't getting there and everything was tearing. Crazy, eh? Crazy, crazy, crazy. And now you were in there for five years or a little over five years, right? 62 months. 62 months in that facility, uh, hanging around with all these sick people and, you know, colorful people, I would say. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, makes us count our blessings, you know, when you're dealing with Alzheimer's, dementia, diabetes. Uh, and, and, you know, I would talk to these diabetes patients and, uh, you know, it was said some of them were really grieved that they didn't take care of themselves and they did everything they could, but that's after they lost money. And, and, you know, that, that's why I, I really think that no matter what you go through, that the key to being a champion is balance. When you recognize you've got a problem in an area, you, you do everything you can to try to correct it. I don't want anybody ever ending up in a, a nursing home. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, that's uh, that's what we say. Sometimes I get angry, eh, you know, with people because you know I find, I mean, you've got two legs, you got two arms, you got a heart, you you're, you can move, you're, and you're just not taking care of yourself. You know, I mean, uh, the, the 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 food. I have a great empathy for people with eating disorders, you know, but every now and then the guy, the people have got to take responsibilities for for what they do, right? Well, hey, listen, Johnny. I, I, it's, it's. Uh, we're gonna do this in parts. We're gonna do this part one, part two, part three, and uh, I'd like to try to take a little pause on this one, and we're gonna come back a little later. All right? Sounds good. All right, Johnny. Thank you for a bit. Thank you for being my friend. My pleasure. All right. See all you right, in a bit. Take care, guys.